Hello friends and welcome back to my channel Home Sweet Classroom. In today's video I thought I would share with you guys just a day in the life of a teacher. I am, if you're new to my channel, I am a combo multi-grade teacher. I teach third, fourth, and fifth grade as a dual language immersion teacher. So, so in today's video we are just going to do all the things that we can get done in on a Monday. Mondays are kind of a great day for me. I feel like Mondays are just a fresh new start. So I get really excited about Mondays, but I don't, I'm not excited if I sleep really late. <laughs> and <clears throat> I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I'm not like a football, I don't watch football, but I know a lot of my students do. So I am hoping that they are not too tired for today's class <laughs> today it's for a monday so but if they are we're going to try to do some things differently so that they can wake up and be excited about being at school and getting getting their learning going so um so yeah i i am so sorry if today seems so short but because my class is in person, for the most part, we do everything in the classroom. So we have lunch in here, we have our specials or what we call encore. Today, actually they have PE, so they won't be in the classroom, but um, just that time just goes so, so fast. So it's, I feel like I can't give you a really accurate perspective of my whole day but I will do my best to show you what it looks like to be in person and to be a teacher during this time of the year. <laughs> um, but it has been a while since I have vlogged, since I have picked up the camera. Well, I, I'm lying. It's been, it's been a while since I have vlogged. Um, I've attempted to do a couple videos and I just, I wasn't too happy with them or it just, it wasn't the right time for me and my family. So. It's kind of been mushy, all scrambled in that perspective, in that little area of my life. But I am super excited to share with you guys today's video, um, just kind of show you what my life looks like on a Monday and um, talk to you guys about what's all the things happening this week. I love February, by the way. I absolutely love a the month of February for several reasons. All the books that have to do with Valentine's, Black History Month, um, just incorporating all the things culturally and sharing that with my students is so, so meaningful to me and I just love that. I'm really trying hard this year to incorporate that into like our soul studies, into read alouds, into like little activities here and there, projects. I love giving my students projects. So I will definitely share those things as they come up and um, just kind of share with you, maybe give you guys some ideas of what you're doing. But if you are celebrating Black History Month in your classroom or at home or wherever you are, I'd love to know what you're doing. Share it down in the comments below because it's such a, such a, delicate topic I think and a lot of people or a lot of teachers are trying to um, incorporate that and it whether it be virtually whether it be in their classrooms and it's just it's really really important to recognize it and to give that students that exposure so if you're doing that in your classroom I'd love to know what you're doing or how you're doing it and um, just kind of share with me and I'm sure everyone else would like to read it as well the different ideas happening in their classrooms. There's so many unique ideas out there and I I just love the diversity of how everyone's incorporating it. So that's super exciting. This morning, it is now about 7.35 and I am just getting myself organized for the day. I've already have my computer up and I was chatting with my husband on the phone while I was setting up and he is getting ready to go to work as well and dropping off the baby at school so i was able to be here early thank goodness because it drives me nuts when i cannot be here early and get set up and just like it that's part of my routine <laughs> and the sun's coming out so it's like looks brighter in in the camera so um yeah i changed up my room just a little bit and I'm hoping that, you know, it's it's okay, it abides by the guidelines, 
be so kind if you have a comment on that because it is a def it is definitely something that I'm keeping in mind, keeping my students healthy, and there are just so many different comments about it, and I am just know that I am really trying my best to keep everyone safe and keeping in mind all of like the guidelines and stuff. So I will show you guys what that looks like in the classroom, how I've grouped my students with the dividers, the protector shield dividers, and how I'm doing my best to keep my students safe. Of course, we wear our masks all day. As a matter of fact, I have my mask that I wanted to share with you guys. This thing, this chain, I don't know what it's called actually, I got from Forever 21 and it was super cheap. It was like three dollars or maybe three to five dollars I'm not sure now and it just goes behind my neck so when I take it off it hangs on my on my neck um but there's so many cute designs I've seen a lot of them on Etsy but I happen to be at Forever 21 and I was like oh let me grab one of these so I are this is just just does just does fine it does just fine there we go and um yeah so that's kind of nice to like not have my mask all the time like hanging from my ear or on my desk or some whatever it is so it's kind of nice that I have it on here and um, I wear a new mask every day so do my kids I don't encourage my students or my kids or my husband or my family to reuse the same mask every day or a, more than one day like it should be dirty laundry on the first after the first day so and it also helps keep your your face clean and away from germs or uh, bacteria causes acne so that's kind of my to say on that I do not wear my mask that's gross <laughs> more than one day so wear your mask one day and then it's dirty laundry <laughs> um, so that's what's happening today I'm gonna go ahead and um, pause the video pause the vlog here and then put you guys down just so that I can get some stuff done I have to go make some copies for my morning work and get set up for my first group of students, my fourth and fifth graders that come in and do reading and then third grade goes to math and then we switch. So I need to get some stuff prepared for that. For third and for fourth and fifth grade, we're doing my idea. For third grade, we're doing cause and effect and I, I love both of those. I love teaching both of those things. So it's really exciting being able to do um, just that different levels, different different levels of teaching and my, with with that content so I'm really excited I will share with you guys some things probably during um, during my planning maybe I'll take a just video record like during my lunch my what exactly I'm giving my students in like my anchor charts if you guys are interested in that just kind of share with you what I'm doing with that um, and yeah so I will definitely catch up with you guys in a little bit <music> currently my break time my planning time and I am in my classroom I'm actually all by myself because my students are at PE now I mentioned this morning that we don't have a planning in our classroom like by ourselves anymore usually the specials or encore teachers are in here giving their class like art and music and um, technology are all in here but for PE they are allowed to go to the gym so that has been really nice to get Mondays to myself in the room and get myself organized sometimes I have parent calls to make um, just like in general I feel like I don't have a whole lot of time to myself so I'm in here and it's been kind of nice and I have a bunch of things to do I think all of us um, teachers have like a million things to do during a planning time so I'm currently listening to my chill study beats I think you can kind of hear it in the background but I'll show you what I'm talking about on YouTube you can find it um, it's chill study beats and I I love playing the music in the background as a day but I like music without any words so let me show you guys what it looks like on YouTube okay so here is what it looks like and I'll I think I'll lower it just a little bit. I think it might be too loud right now. 
Uh, there we go. Okay. So this is what it looks like if you're not familiar with the Chill Study Beads. It's just, there's actually different ones, different versions. There's like this one here and this one I play at home a lot. Um, there's like deep focus and study music here, but I really like the, the, um, the raccoon. Oh my goodness. I almost lost my train of thought. The raccoon, because if I playing it just in the background, I'm not using my smart board, I will display it. And the students like just really love looking at the acorn and just kind of a peaceful environment. So I'm going to put you guys down. I also use Spotify. There we go. <laughs> so I also use Spotify in my classroom. Um, I use like the music um, in on Spotify. I think I'll put a picture of who I follow. And she's been really, um, really amazing to be able to like pull music from and just have like an option of uh, music that's appropriate in the classroom. It's really, really nice to have that. And it's, you know, it's free or if you have like the the subscription which I do I pay monthly $10 because I listen to a lot of music so that's what I do in the classroom let me know what you guys listen to in the classroom or if, if you do or you don't what are your thoughts on playing music in the classroom my students love it my daughter's always telling me she really likes that about me so I kind of try to listen to my student feedback my students feedback and guys every year is different because one once one group of students might be great with like chill beats like this and then another group of students rather have like music with words or what another group of students will just not do well with music it just kind of depends on every year I haven't had a group of students that doesn't like the music in the background and it also depends on what we're doing or working on like the 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 vibes that I need to put out for my students and what we're working on so that's kind of my thoughts on music in the classroom and Today we learned about Bessie Coleman. We did a worksheet from Scholastic News. The Scholastic News actually has a um, magazine for their, like on their, their, one of the new magazines for Bessie Coleman for this week, or maybe it was last week that was there. But I just thought it was super cute, like the way the magazine was organized and how it was like the... Oh my goodness, the graphic on there, the like the, the graphic of the magazine article, and it was just all about Bessie, and then the teacher edition has a video you can play, and I just think Scholastic News always has really great resources that teachers can use, and ideas, all kinds of great stuff, so I definitely like using Scholastic, and this is what we worked on. We did watch a video, we read the article together, and then... We worked on this worksheet with the closed reading questions and I actually just had them do it with a partner, kind of work together in their groups and um, it just made it more engaging and I love like how they talk about the text and all of that. But I do have a book that I do want to share with you guys. It's called Young, Gifted and, and Black and this book is so great. It's very sim or not very similar, but it's, it reminds me of 28 Days. That book was sold out at Walmart, guys. I was so sad, and I was like, well, by the time I get it on Amazon, it's, like, almost done with February. So I was like, oh, I think I'll just wait. But I remembered that I had this book, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's right. I did get this book. So I was super excited about sharing it with my class, and it's just 52 black heroes from past and present. And today, and just what I do every single day is I just read a um a page a day or maybe two a day and I use it as my read aloud and then I also have uh, my students read aloud pick or when I get to, when I turn when we get to one a new one sometimes I have my students read aloud I actually had one today read one and then also on Friday I had a student read one, uh, one of the one of the young gifted in black stories so today we read about Oh, we wrote it. We read it actually read about Bessie Coleman and I did I always do this in the morning with my fourth and fifth graders and then my third graders get their my schedule is crazy guys. So if I get into it, I will never be done. But the point is I read this to my fourth and fifth graders and then my third graders in the afternoon after lunch, they did a whole 
magazine thing on Bessie Coleman. So on, on Wednesday, I will do a whole lesson with my fourth and fifth graders on our virtual class. So that's kind of summing it up because if I tell you the whole schedule, it'll be forever. But I just love how creative this is. And then tomorrow we will read actually about Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. So I'm super excited about this. I'm thinking about doing like a little activity with it or some kind of art activity. I don't know. I was just really excited to see this. So this is what we'll be doing, reading about, we'll be reading about them tomorrow. And as I told my students, like we're obviously not going to get through this whole thing <laughs> in one month. So I'm really excited about just continue reading and having it as a read aloud as an option to like end the day, things like that. Um, and having that choice to read in the classroom. And I just put it back here with the rest of my read alouds. I do have other books like Skin Like Mine and I have um, Hidden Figures. I saw some really great lessons on this one. So I'm kind of excited to look at those and see what I, how I can incorporate this into a lesson. I believe I saw this one as a STEM, a STEM project one. And I thought that was really neat. So I might look into doing this as a STEM project one. And I also have other books that I want to incorporate for this month. But I don't have a whole lot like some of the newer books. I wish I had some of the newer books or just like different, for I like a different variety. The books that we have here at this at the school are kind of older <laughs> and not to say they're not great but they're not um the like the graphic the the illustrations and stuff isn't like so appealing as the newer newer authors and the new books that have come out recently or in the past years these are these are much older <laughs> so that's kind of where i wish i would have gotten or ordered or something more books i did put them on my wish list on my amazon wish list and I also like put them on the wish list for my for my parents to see like on my scholastic wish list and then on our class Amazon wish list I think it is and yeah so I'm hoping that I can get some of those I really need to be more um mindful that I need to order books like a month in advance when it comes to like celebrations and holidays seasons things like that I'm not too great at that I kind of look for it last minute hoping that our library has some of these books so there's nothing wrong with that because sometimes I spend way too much money and then it gets me in trouble so I right now I'm going to probably just clean up and then get myself organized for this afternoon, when they get back, we are going to be doing some word study is what I think we're going to do. Um, and just kind of finishing up on that. And then they'll have a little bit of time to do some things. I'm just looking at my lesson plans. They'll have a little bit of time to work on some things that they ha need to complete. We basically only have like 30 minutes left of the day because from here they go to from specials or encore they go to spe to recess and then after recess they come in and then it's like 30 minutes till the end of till dismissal till we pack up so it's not a whole lot of time in between sometimes I feel like all we get to do is clean up and pack up just because of how much time it takes but that's okay let me show you guys the classroom because I haven't shown you that yet let me show you what it looks like All right, so this is a view of my classroom with student desks, and it's a little messy right now. They do try to do, do a good job in cleaning up, and but as you can see, I have the dividers here. Some of, I think there's like two groups maybe that need a divider, three groups that need another divider, but I've encouraged parents to get their students their own divider. This is, this is the one I found on Amazon. Um, and I thought it was really great. And if each student can have one of these, that would be fabulous. But I think from you know the ones that they've given us so far, I think they do just well. Um, sometimes students need to like kind of turn or turn their head a little to see the the board if I'm doing anything on the board or on like toward the front of the room. But I feel like in this way, they're able to at least collaborate with their teammates in 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 their group 
and it just allows also a lot more space for me to walk before they were in like rows and it was really hard to walk because I have 26 students and each one of them needed a desk so that was really really difficult for my classroom and in this way I think it's just a lot easier to see my students and walk around the room um, and just give them more elbow space <laughs> because in rows it seems like they were just so clustered and I don't it just was not even near what I would have liked for my class so this is what it looks like if you guys have any suggestions please let me know um, but I ask you to be kind because this is such a delicate topic and it's just it, it's difficult all the way around but I wanted to share this just in case everybody wants an idea or something and yeah so <laughs> on the other hand this is new I was really excited I want a giveaway on Instagram and I, I was so excited to win this guys like it was the like a really big giveaway for me and in here I just have all of the stuff that I like use all the time for my class and like that I need to be accessible really quickly because of the, if I'm virtually teaching as well as in the classroom but it's just kind of nice having something in the front that has to do with everything I'm like using on hand, if that makes sense. Here, so I have my markers, dry erase markers, anchor chart markers, and just other stuff that I've been using. Here's some stickers, and all of my erasers are over here, my Smarties, and then I give these to my students when they talk in Spanish. It says, hablé en español. And I really like those because it encourages them to talk and then they get to earn those and it's like not focusing. Okay, so and then I have kiss your brains. I get I use this as a prop and then I give them a smarties for kissing their brain and my coffee here. But this is kind of where I house all of my stuff when I'm teaching up here. And then this is our point system for whole brain teaching. Um, I need to be more consistent about it, but this is what I use for whole brain teaching and it I use a lot of components of it, but it's just the point system. Sometimes the we don't they switch so fast and with third, fourth and fifth switching out for math and for English math, it's just kind of so hard to keep up with the points, but that's what I've been using. Okay friends, last thing before my students come back from PE, I wanted to share with you what I'm doing for their homework for reading. Um, I want, I'm always trying to have the intention of making reading homework um, meaningful as much as I can for reading, but just sometimes just listening to and knowing that they're reading at home is so, so important. So I created a digital, or actually I didn't create, I partially created a digital reading log, um, but I do wanna give credit to the person that was orig originally the creator of it. And I just kind of added to it. Um, let's see, Megan Brooks from uh, Teachers Pay Teachers, but the product didn't come with everything that I needed it to, so I kind of tweaked it to how, what I needed it to have. And so let me just show you guys what it looks like. <laughs> okay, I finished the slides that I wanted students to respond in. Here's main idea, vocabulary words, and they're just gonna type the word in and definition here. And then I want them to rate the text. I'm really excited to see what they do for this. Uh, making connections, text structure, compare and contrast text sequence, text structure sequence, and that is the last one. And then they just, all they do is just drag this taco on the one that they completed, and there we go. And then they get a free space here for Miss Laura, Miss Laura says taco break. And that's pretty much it. Um, as far as it goes with 
this reading log and then they of course they have to read the 30 minutes and then just fill it in here they get four days i don't assign homework on fridays and that's it so again i got this resource from megan brooks however it doesn't come with the other slides that i created but it does come with this one and then you can kind of manipulate it so that you can make it adjustable and editable for the way you want it to be but it is free so i thought that was really cool Hello friends, so it is now the end of the day. Classroom's pretty picked up right now. The students helped me um, sweep up and my daughter was also helping me a little bit and then we were kind of cleaning up, tidying up anyways. I'm going to head out of here. I have to go pick up the baby on base, so I have to run out of here. The li My library is such a mess, guys. That is something that I wanted to work on, but I won't get a chance to. Um, so that'll be for another time. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here, guys. I am going to head out and hopefully going to go home and work out and make dinner, all the good stuff. Um, today is meatless Monday for my family. So I usually cook up a meal without like without using any meat. We call it meatless Mondays. And that's it for today. And that kind of wraps up what a day looks like for me, besides all the background stuff, you know, that teachers do that you've seen before and just being able to organize myself for tomorrow. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wish I could share more and give you guys more of what's going, going on in the classroom, but that's all I've got. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below to my channel if you're not yet subscribed to my YouTube family here. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.